and welcome everybody to another episode of what now uh, thanks for tuning in i hope everyone is doing okay and is safe and healthy in these times um today will be um a little different because i am actually talking well it's not going to be different it's going to be the same as everything else um i'm just going to wait until everybody starts coming in it is nine o'clock in the evening here and um yeah, I'm ready to do another ins inspiring talk with another creative person. It will be MC Nice, who I've actually known for about 20 something years now. And um, yeah, it's, it's incredible to see the change that he's made, but he's still a wonderful artist. So I'm definitely excited to talk to him about his journey uh, since those 20 years. Um, I met him a long time ago in LA, I think it was in 2000, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible to see how people can, can shift their, their path and, and create a different journey, but staying in the same um, industry, actually. Hey, Evan, how are you? Long time. Hope everything is well with you. And I see that... Um, my guest has arrived, so let me see if I can get him in here. It's a little quiet tonight, so I'm not sure. What is it today? Wednesday, so. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hey, what's going on with you? I'm good. How are you? It's been a while. Yeah, man. It's been a, it's been a minute. Yeah, a long minute. Yeah. It's, I was doing? just... Uh, I was just doing the little introduction where um, I was saying that I've known you for like... 20 years or so oh man yeah yeah real facts <laughs> i didn't even I think about just, it like that yeah i was thinking about it i was like oh my gosh i've known you for more than half my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, and, it's, that, and yeah. i was just saying like when i met you um you're already an artist and for me mm -hmm. to see because you know we've we've lost touch and you know everybody's doing their thing and and seeing how how you are still being creative and making music but have kind of turned into a different path is just amazing to see because you've always been into music and you've always been a creative person and for right. you to now steer it into a different um a different goal a different path is 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 amazing mm -hmm. so yeah. how okay if um for the people that are tuning in that may not know you um yeah let's start from the beginning a little bit um tell me something about how you started how right. did you start in music period well the unique thing is that when i first started i was a christian rapper uh when i first started but um at the time the church wasn't really checking for christian rap it was right. always considered like you know the devil's music yeah i'm like how are we the devil's music when we rapping for god right but you know ultimately uh it, it it caused me to go into you know that that backlash from the church caused me to go into the secular world where, you know, I started making music, was a form, joined a group called Kansas Cali, uh, where I was I remember the lead, that. yeah, where I was the lead uh, rapper, uh, vocalist. The green and uh, yellow. Yeah, yeah, we and, uh, yeah. Uh, and so uh, we landed on six motion picture soundtracks. One of them won an Oscar, a movie called Crash. And so um, we did Crash, we did Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. We did uh, Haven with Orlando Bloom, kicking it old school with Jamie Kennedy, and then messed around and also produced uh, Tupac and Nas. So right. uh, Tupac had had, had uh, just been killed, and um, and they were trying to get the, you know get a, a solid record out for him. And uh, we ultimately ended up getting the lead single off of that called Thug's Mansion. So that record came out, and um, I got a you know, it went double platinum, and then Nas's record uh, came out, and it went platinum. And then ultimately ended up producing and featuring on like uh, Casey from uh, Jodeci, right, his right. album, uh, Aaron Hall from Guy, his album. Oh, I love Aaron Hall. Uh, did the theme song for uh, the NBA in 2010 and then uh, messed around and uh, worked with Prince and the uh, Dr. Fink of Prince and the Revolution where uh, Prince had a tribute album that came out and um, well, that was coming out. And our, we redid Pop Life. And they co-signed that. He signed off on it. You know what I mean? So that was pretty dope in itself. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been uh, I've been active. 
and then um then when I when the group disbanded, I did a solo record under the name of uh uh, uh MC Nice, which is my name now. Right. Prior to that I was known as novelist. I was yeah, about to say so, I met you as novelist, yeah. Right. And then nice stands for novelist is constantly evolving. So it's like oh, MC. That's good. Yeah. Right. So I'm an MC that's constantly evolving, MC nice. Um and so uh, I ended up coming out with a record uh, with an actress, a well-known actress named Stacey Dash. We put out a record called Life of the Party. It was co-signed by Russell Simmons. And then um, some things happened where, you know, it, it got some controversies came out in regards to the Obama situation and caused the record to go, Right, you know I, mean? I was and about to so, say, I remember right, that and too. So I had to wait about six months and then I dropped another record with an a, a, a Indian artist named Suhana Machete. And okay. uh, that record hit the Billboard charts, uh, 13 weeks on the Billboard charts. Wow. And then um, in the midst of that, God was like, yo, I need you to take all this knowledge that you didn't gain and bring Come it over. Come back to the Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said, bring it over to Christian hip hop. And I need you to uh, you know, help uh, uh, lead uh, the coalition of people that's representing me. You know what I mean? Right. And so uh, I did that. And uh, ultimately, God was like, yo, man, man, what's up, sir? I got a record coming out with that guy Friday. Oh, cool. Popeye. So um, he's a, he, that's, a, that's a guy that you should look out for. He's going to be he's going to be a beast. Um, so Noted. <laughs> in, um, in 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 that in that transition, God was like, I need you to not only bring that information, but I need you to show the people. So ultimately, I, I recorded an album called Praise. It wasn't my best record, but at the end of the day, it was a record that uh, that was needed. Right. And so I did the, I did the record in 14 songs, two days, right? And uh, put out a single with my man Sam Peasy, a record called uh, I Got Angels in July. And by October, that, that record was number one, you know, That's on great. the Billboard charts. And then um, I dropped the album and the album went number one on the, go on the Billboard charts as far as the gospel. Ultimately wow. ended up having five number one records, you know, uh, and nobody knew who I was. Right. And you're saying, so, and you're saying it wasn't my best record. <laughs> right, right. Well, the record I'm doing now, uh, Iron Dove, is going to be a fire record. You know what I mean? Because cool. I'm putting the the real effort, the real energy. I think if, you know, putting that first album out, it was just more or less not understanding that um, the genre had like a multitude of dudes in there that can really go, whether it be Lecrae, right. Bizzle, Derek Minor, like uh, even uh, NF, you know, it was uh, everybody, you know, see him now, but he's he was a Christian rapper. Right. And so um, for me, it was a matter of show them and then help them. Right. right. And, not, and, and I don't charge, I'm not charging people. I'm like, yo, here's the information. And then if you're serious about it, it, then I can yeah. tell you how to, yeah, how, to, how to go about it. And then, you know, went from there. And so yeah, I am um, That's like literally the past twenty years in a nutshell. Um, yeah, well, with the exception of a few other things, like I got a book out. I got right. A you did out. the yeah. TV stuff. And, yeah, you know, right. I didn't even stuff. get into we all of that other stuff. We right. can't discuss all of the stuff that that, that <laughs> right. you've been doing into detail. Um, uh -huh. Because I remember, I, I mean, obviously, I've seen the stuff that you've been doing, but then you know, life. Um, so it's really good to hear that you have been staying busy, but I already knew that you were staying busy. I mean, right. I still, I think I still have the physical copies of, um, Kansas Cali's. Oh, wow. <laughs> somewhere, dope. somewhere in, 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 in an attic. <laughs> right, right. Hey, yeah, it's yeah. a classic record. <laughs> I know, classic right? Music. I'm keeping yeah. that one. Um, and so for me, uh, I worked with a Christian rapper for five years. I was managing him and he's the one that actually met you. Um, I think it's like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, uh, Jay Way. Um, oh, Jay Way is fire. Yeah, so I managed him for five years. I did and not I remember, know that. Huh? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I did that, and uh, so because he told me that he, I think, I think he was filming when he met you in. Um, yeah, where we was both it? Were, we were on a. Uh, a it, was it a now? Show. No, it was a it was a it was a show at Baldwin Hills in uh, oh, L.A. Okay. Yeah, uh, we were both on. A, he was on a different segment, and I was on a different right. segment. Yeah, I saw his I saw his Instagram, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's my old friend. And right, 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 right. 
such a small world to me because I got um, Jay to sign with uh, Word Entertainment in Nashville. Okay. So Word, right. that's how, that's how, I mean, unfortunately we don't work together anymore, but yeah, I, I got him to that, to that place where, you know, he can flourish and do what he needs to do. Um, mm -hmm. But that's how I got back up on you. And I was like, oh, wait, what's he doing? Because obviously you, you changed your, your artist name Whereas right. I wasn't gonna find you a novelist, so <laughs> right, 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 right. But that was that was amazing to see how you're doing that. So how was it for you to first go from from Christian rap to basically worldly rap, and then back to Christian rap again? Well, how was that internally for you, aside from musically? Well, I mean, if you listen to Kansas Cali, you know. Um, You'll see that I really didn't deviate from who I, you know, from what I represent. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was Everything always we've good always music. Been, was, it was it clean. wasn't, you didn't right, go uh, left. Yeah. Right. And so for me, the switch wasn't, it was just like, I didn't know that, that, the, that this Christian hip hop world existed like that. You right. know what I'm saying? It was, you know, I, I knew that Kurt Franklin kicked over the doors. You know, people right. ain't really giving him that type of credit, but he did. Think about yeah. it. When Stomp came out, he had salt from salt and pepper on the record. Right, you, think, you know what I'm saying? So, and it was That's like true. the first like, uh, 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 like gospel record that really came in and and was progressive that blew the doors off. So, you it know, was pop, yeah, right, yeah, uh, and um, uh, and so for me it was just okay. You watch that, you did this. I wasn't really like certain that you know that was gonna take off, even though you know I had my convictions about it, like yo certain I, you know certain environments I didn't want to be in. I don't drink, I don't smoke, so. You know, in the rap game, if you're not a smoker or a drinker, you know what I mean? Like, it, you know, it's, it's hard. not as much anymore because I've been, I, obviously, I've been in this industry for the past 20 years as well. Right. And um, it's, I mean, there are people that are not doing, like, I met J-Way and he wasn't drinking or smoking or doing anything. So, yeah, but I'm talking um, about this is uh, prior to me going, uh, prior, with me in secular. Like, right. at the time when, you know, if you're a secular artist, Right. If you ain't if you ain't puffing the lie, you know, or sipping the henny, then you know you're not really viable. How can you even rap? You know well, back I mean? in the so, day, that was maybe one of the things that that could have held you back. But I feel like the world today is different because Jay is is not necessarily Christian rap. Jay mm -hmm. is commercial rap with he's a Christian rapper that does commercial rap. But they call um, him inspirational. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and he's actually, he's worked with, with uh, artists over here that have number one hits and they're all smoking. Wow. You know, we've been in the same studios where everybody's smoking. Oh, yeah, he's I, just sitting there and people look at him like, how can you not curse and not drink and smoke when, when you're an artist? And they were, and he was teaching them. Like, it was very inspiring to see him teach these other rappers that you don't have to do that and you can still have a fan base and still, you know, get booked everywhere at commercial festivals. Right. So, I, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Today and today is really changed around in the sense that. Yeah. Yeah. Now you ain't you got you ain't got to succumb to that. Even though there's right. a, there's a part of the world that, you know, I don't know what's going on with rap that now if it's all about leaning and popping pills <laughs> versus you know what I'm saying, and mumbling. You know. Right. What I mean? so, <laughs> so, it, yeah. Uh, and which is why uh, Christian hip hop is blowing up on a on a level from as far as popularity. So. When you start seeing um, TV commercials with Christian rappers in it, you're going, wait, hold up, that's a Christian rap record. You know, whether it be uh, Giannis's right. MVP earphones or, or Steph Curry or um, Will Smith with uh, Coming In Hot by Lecrae and right. Andy Mineo. You know what I mean? So there's been a, it's been commercialized to that point. Even 1K Few right. and uh, uh, Toby Nwigwe being added to NBA 2K. Yeah, you know I mean, so it's it's it's, so that, it's really moving. That's something that I can say America or the United States have always been more forward about. Uh, me growing up in in the Netherlands in Amsterdam, we're a pretty atheistic country. We're Catholic according to our you know um, our, our laws yeah, and stuff. Your doctrine, yeah. yeah, yeah. But but I grew up with pretty much nobody believing in God. I went to a public school. And so my first encounter with people that I could actually talk to about because they knew what it was like to go to the Sunday school and church was uh -huh. when I was talking to people from the United States. 
None mm. of my friends went to Sunday school here because I went to public school. And I so you. I didn't really get a good circle of uh, people in faith until I was way older. And then when I started working with Jay, that circle got bigger and it made me feel better because, you know, I was able to be me, which I should always be, obviously. But it's just a completely different environment. Like almost everyone I know in the United States at least grew up with God and church, whether they believe oh, yeah. or not. Over here, they don't. They don't even know what it is to, oh, to go uh, to church. I know in the Black community, in the Puerto Rican community, it was always mandatory. I, I, started, right. out with, I started out Pentecostal, you know what I mean? And then, you know, uh, as I evolved mentally, then I understood that not, you know, I became non-denomination, you know. Um, but it was interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Like Sunday school was a must. You wasn't going yeah. one. You wasn't going nowhere on Sunday but to church. Same. You know and I mean? sang so. in church. I sang in the musicals. My dad was always in the band. And so, and it, it was actually a black church that we went to. So it <laughs> makes sense. Um, yeah, it was a Surinamese church out here in Amsterdam. Um, but always full of music. Kind of, you know, you can compare it to what we see of the black churches in America. But right. that was not necessarily the norm out here. So uh -huh. for me, um, really coming into me with my faith didn't happen until I had actual friends in the United States. And, mm. um, but of course, now I have a whole new world opening up for me and I see more young people with faith and, you know, mm. that being a nice bridge coming into the world that we're living in today. Um, yeah. Huh, for those right. who are, are watching and don't know, uh, the series that I'm doing is called What Now? Uh, which is supposed to be a motivational relief for creators during a pandemic. That's how I started this. Obviously, it's more than just relief for creators because it's it's now evolved to being inspirational, and motivational for people that don't know what to do in these times. Um, okay. What better yeah. than to have an artist that incorporates their faith into their lives and their work? So one of the questions that I have for you is being a creative person, what was the biggest impact for you uh, when the pandemic hit? I mean, most artists say it's shows and stuff. Was that the same for you? Yeah, well, yeah, that was, it was big because, you know, I'm one of the executive directors and uh, creators for the 20, God's House of Hip Hop 2020 Summer Fest, the Fest yeah. here in Los Angeles at the Bank of California Stadium. And our festival is supposed to take place July 17th. Right. You know, so when the pandemic hit, that crushed all of our marketing efforts because instantly people are like, no, 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 it, it, they don't want to buy tickets. They want right. to preserve for toilet paper and water. You know yes. what I mean? So it yeah. was just, uh, it crushed that. Fortunately for us, you know, we have a great relationship with the stadium and, and venue that uh, we were allowed to reschedule the festival for July 2021. Right. You know, most people was like, why you guys didn't do it later on this year or, uh, uh, you know, after because it's not going to be around. But at the end of the day, I was like, yo, when it comes to the crises like this, it's going to take at least a year to get people's yeah. confidence back to come out and be like, yeah, I want to go out. I want to go do that. Then you also give people time to work out protocols that are going to be yes. needed for, you know, this festival. So for us, we would before us would be like Coachella, uh, South yeah. by Southwest. You know, all these major festivals are before us. You know yeah. what I mean? And so they get to work all work out all the kinks, and then we get to be the beneficiaries yeah. of all the protocols that are put in place, all the kinks that are put in place. And on top of that, we get a year uh, and some change to really market the festival. To really, yeah. To, you know to what I mean? do it right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was one. And then as an artist, sure, I was I was planning to put out an album um, that March. I mean that uh, that. Yeah, April. And um, and it didn't happen because once you see the pandemic happening, um, oh, okay, I got you. Who wrote that? Oh, Toast of Wisdom. And so once you see the, uh, once, once the pandemic happened, it was just like, okay, now's not the time to go out and try to, you know, uh, uh, solicit a record to collect right. money from people. It's more like, why don't you be, you know, uh, try to figure out how to help, figure out new ways to create new businesses? Because what's happening now is digital businesses are going to really start booming through the roof. Yeah. You know, um, if you have that type of uh, wherewithal, and if not, go learn because yeah. 
the, the, the social distancing is real and it's going to be real for the foreseeable futures. But if you have a business that's online, that's digital, that, you know, that fits a niche, then you're going to thrive, you know, right. extremely. And so that's what I ultimately ended up doing with, uh, we postponed the festival, uh, rescheduled the festival for July. So that yeah. was a check. My album's like, okay, I get now get about six months to, you know, really work on the record. So I'm putting that out in October, Iron Dove, October, MC Nice. Um, yeah, and uh, so that's check. And then, um, and then you know, I got I own a radio station as well with uh, Shiny G called God's House of Hip Hop 2020, uh, 2020 summer fest. God's House of Hip Hop Radio on the Dash radio platform, which services about 13 million people a month, right? Wow. And we're uh, probably the second or third largest station on the platform. And we're the first station in the history of... Uh, of gospel music to win a stellar award and we're a BDS reporting station. So now all of our spins that we play for artists count. Wow. And so, you know, and that was another thing that had to be monumental for uh, the movement of uh, Christian hip hop is, you know, because a lot of the artists don't understand what BDS means and what right. that means for you. You know what I mean? When you're going into these record companies trying to get these major deals and you ain't got no BDS report, they gonna give you the boo-boo deal. Yeah. You know, versus if you got spins that are counted by the yeah. the, the, the organizations. It's that all a they, numbers game. Yeah, yeah. 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 By the organizations that they respect, then yeah. it's different. So for me, that's what it was about was how do I elevate the platform and um and teach use, the people, give out right. the knowledge and the information. But at the same time, you know, you know, um, earning my way. You know what I mean? So figuring right. out how to stay afloat while giving yeah. out free knowledge. You know what I mean? So Well that's I mean, that's what we're all kind of doing. So that's also why this this series started. I mean, I'm obviously I'm not making any money off of these talks, but what I get out of it is the knowledge that's being spread, the motivation, the inspiration, and the ideas, the feedback, just for people to know that they're not alone in this and maybe get sparked some ideas by what they're hearing. Um, you know, everybody thinks different in a pandemic. So uh -huh. it's good to hear how other people are doing, but also good to see that you're not the only one struggling because I've right. had a lot of artists and, and creative people in my talks that are dealing with the same mental issues, the same physical issues, and the same financial issues during a right. pandemic. Um, I think um, being a creative, you know what I'm saying? When you're a creative, you think of creative ways. And yeah. so in this respect, like for instance, if you're going to do a digital business, I always preach the, uh, there's a word, I don't even say preach is I teach. There's a word uh, in business. If anybody's ever put together a uh, business plan, there's a thing called SWAT. S W O T. Yeah, the SWAT, the strength, right. Yeah. Opportunities and threats. Yeah. But why shouldn't that be applicable to everything you do in life? No, right? I was so about to say that. That's, right. I mean, I I studied marketing. I, I have right, I majored, right. I majored in marketing, so the SWAT so you analysis is the first thing about. we learn. Right. And so I apply that to everything in life. And that. And that's, and that's funny because that's what I've done and I've become successful in that. So I always tell people, when you're creating a song, what's the swat of that song? Yeah. What, you know, under the beat itself, what's the strength of that beat? What's yeah. the weaknesses of that beat? You know, um, if you know everything about what it is that you want to get into, nine times out of 10, you'll be pretty successful. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, and success you, is also, success is, is, is what you define it. it. There's no one definition of success. Facts, um, yeah. It's not only, hey, I have to be millionaire. It, success is whatever you want to get out of what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's yeah, something it's, that- It's all about the goals you set and then right. the goals that you achieve. Whether it's, right. hey, I want to put out a, rec a record this year. And if you get that record out, you achieve that. Yes, you know exactly. I mean? so, yeah, I agree with you. So it's also about celebrating the small wins. Um, what people fail to see in this time is only what they've lost, what they don't have, what they can't do. When there's so much thing, there, there's so many things that you can still do. Like you said, you can create a digital platform or find other ways. But also just the fact that we're you you may be healthy. You know, you're still alive. Um, you right. have food, running water. Um, just the basics. Um, sure, we can't hug our loved ones, but we can talk to them through a, a phone or wave at them if you can stop by. There's just so many things that we have to try to think of that, that keeps us going. 
and mm-hmm. go back to basic. Just be thankful for the basic things that you have and expand from there. Instead of right. you know trying to climb from where you were, you may have had a little setback, but we're still alive. You know. Real you know? facts. Um, yeah, uh, 2.0 said it's a huge opportunity if you look at it the right way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. one of the biggest opportunities that I've heard people say is, especially artists that are touring, is oh, I get the time to breathe. I can sit still. I can work on my mental health. I can try and, and get my routine physically. I can, you know, um, do this diet that I always wanted to do. Those are things that are very important for you as a person to right. maintain healthy, but also to progress because you you have the time to do of knowledge to read the books or you know um perfect your skill like you right. said do up the knowledge for everything that that has anything to do in your business if you want to be a business because uh, artists are a business then you yep. have to learn all the aspects of the business and not all artists Thanks. know that which is why i'm a manager as well <laughs> um and i teach my artists that because i'm not a person i don't want to i don't want to tell them that because then i'm out of a job no please learn because if, if for some reason i'm not there or whatever then you have to know how everything works and that goes for any business that you're in not just a creative business i mean if you're a, a marketing manager at a corporate uh a okay. business then hey learn new things see what's 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 out there how the market is today yeah and real so, fact. So, i look at it from the standpoint also that um what my man max say you have to have a captive audience to promote to yeah or yeah, at the at the same time you put yourself in a position to get a captive audience you know yes. it's really yeah, yeah like right now content is king but yeah. consistent content is king you know what i mean yes. so if you can put out a piece but if, if you're not consistent with it it's not going to work for you. It's going to be know? snowed under by everybody else's content. Yeah. yeah and and if you don't facts. have that audience, you have to, then there's that step before that. Find the audience. Who is your audience? That's, and, uh, and that's how a do part of SWAT. Them? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> right. And so, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, 20, I think it's the 22 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. It says, it, 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 uh, it's a book. The 22 okay. Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And it's all about what you just said in regards to leaders developing other leaders, even if those leaders are greater leaders than he yes. or she. Yes. At the end of the day, um, those, you know, if you continue to build and then they continue to build, then you'll have progress. Right. So, yeah, that's absolutely correct, which is what I'm doing in uh, as far as the Christian hip hop scene right. as well is putting people in position of power so that they can build and then they can build, build, and then they can build, build. And then right. now you have a culture that's thriving. So who have been some of the people that you have learned from? Who are some of your mentors over the years? Oh, that's crazy. Um, I mean, because it, it goes back to uh, my late my late pops, uh, Dijon um, Clark. He was a minister and then taught me some, you know, some real valuable life lessons in that respect. But then I've had conversations with... Uh, uh, like Rakim, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which is oh yeah, know, he's oh my god, right. he's one big ball of knowledge. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, interviewed you know I mean? him, so, so yeah. Yeah, so Thanks, when you, you yeah, but you know, and that right there, when you think about those things, you go, hmm. Yeah. You know, but just I think, but more like books. There's a book I'm reading right now called Contagious. I don't know if you ever read that book, but it's absolutely fire. Hold on, I think I might have it one sec. Yeah, let me see that so I can see if uh-huh. I can Boom. put that add that to my book list. Hold on, okay, cool. Hold on. I, I see that I see the the cover, so I'll find Jonah it. Jonah Berger. Okay, Jonah Berger. This book okay. will change your life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so what's funny is I'm I'm talking to so many people in my in my live talks. Everybody has books, so my book list is becoming like <laughs> super long. Like. Oh my gosh! I wish I could speed read or something. Yeah, that book was recommended by Karen Civil. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, 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 I know her. And uh, and Nipsey Hussle. Okay, so I know him so too. It's a, yeah. Right, so it's it's one of those books that once you dive into it, you go, yo, I didn't really think of it like that. Like they give you one stat where it says out of. I'm, uh, I'm writing it down. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Right, so, so they give you a stat that says out of the social media marketing, right? How many? What's the percentage of the retention from social media marketing? Right. Right. Out of a hundred percent, what is the retention? Ten percent. Seven. Seven. 
Seven percent. I was close because I knew. Yeah, it you was very much. close. I was like, yeah, well, that's because you're a marketing genius. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know how it <laughs> you know works. I mean? But yeah, seven percent retention. So all these people putting all this money yeah. into social media marketing, but not the right social media marketing. Right. You know, the right you strategies. Getting, right. You only getting the seven percent retention. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just that alone was like, whoa. So you spending thousands of bucks or hundreds of bucks. What's up, Darius? And, uh, but uh, but I'm sorry to cut in there, but that's again like you like you apply the SWOT analysis to everything in your life. The seven percent retention is the same with your time and energy into people. If you do not put them in the right people or the right situations or the right work projects, then uh -huh. you're not you probably won't even get seven percent back. Yeah. Oh, you facts. Can, yeah. That's real facts. But like I said, when you when you crossbreed that with the SWOT. Yeah. <laughs> then you, you, you're this gonna is marketing one on one with MC Nice. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and, and and pay, right, and so uh, yeah. But when you crossbreed that with the SWAT, then you you'll you'll be likely you'll be successful because then you'll understand you know the things that are wrong about it. Yes, and so okay, people, I see everybody um, leaving comments and stuff. If you have questions, please put them in the question box because I don't want the flow of the conversation to get interrupted. Sure, you can make comments, of course, and we'll see them. But if you actually have questions that you want particular answers to, please put them in the question box below near the near the comment section, and we'll get to that. It says TikTok, IG, FB, Twitter. Yeah, that's all, all cool, of that. but you yeah. still need the other stuff. Yes. You know what I'm saying? How many are up on Reddit? Right. You know <laughs> like Reddit and even so, of... just just yeah. putting content out there on those those social media channels doesn't necessarily convert to anything. Real facts. Real facts. Not even fans. Because you no. can put content out there, but I mean, I might not get any followers. The only followers I get is when I have talks with celebrities, but they're <laughs> right. not really interested in what I do, so they leave again. So, right. you know, it doesn't say anything. Like when people see that it's a numbers game, yes, but you know, nowadays people can buy followers and likes and, and, and whatnot. So it's a numbers game, yes, but eventually you have to see how much that converts. Like even yeah. you, you have like 50,000 followers. I hope that more than 7% buys your music, listens to your music, promotes you, because then you're doing a good thing. I'm sure you do. But yeah, I know- oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm actually pretty good. So, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> right, right. So. Oh, yeah, or I wouldn't right. be uh, able to do the things I'm able to do. So, yeah. Um, so going back to uh, uh, the inspiration that you right. had or the mentors that you had, um, what other than your faith and God are things that inspire you in these type, type of times or in general? Yeah, I like, um, well, you know, in this time, I live by a model, right? My motto is for any great achievement, someone has to be, do it. So why not you? Right? That's so, a good one. Right? And so at the end of the day, and then also to strive for perfection, so I limit my mistakes. So you, everybody, we're all going to have, we're not going to be perfect people. But if you're constantly striving for something, for, for perfection, you'll limit those mistakes. And every day I wake up, I try to strive for perfection. Right. You know, so that I'm limiting my stakes. Every day I wake up, I'm trying to be that person to achieve, you know, something that nobody's ever done, you know right. what I mean? Or making impossible to impossible, you know? Yeah. Uh, so when I'm inspired by people that are doing that, yeah. per se, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're like uh, 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 a rowboater and you yeah. get out there and you rowboat across the Atlantic Ocean like, oh my yo, gosh, yes. I'm with you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, <laughs> so, I you know hear I mean? you. Because yeah, I wouldn't do that. I know. You know, but understand, to understand the mental fortitude that someone has yes. and the, the, the capacity to just like, I'm going to go do this and do it. You know, yeah. so I'm inspired by those move, those things. I see people out there marching. I see people out there, you know, hands up, you know, I can't breathe. But at the end of the day, um, there's a thing called voting. Yeah. So if yeah. you're not, if you can march all you want to, but if you don't vote locally, and nationally, none Nothing's of that's going gonna to change. mean nothing. Yeah, systems are not going to change. Because all they're going to do is say, oh, okay, we didn't like the way they marched, so we're going to put a law in place right. that uh, alleviates them protesting like that. And because you didn't participate in the elections, that law passed, and then you'll get mad because yeah. your First Amendment right has been uh, challenged. So for me, it was just a matter of, at the end of the day, let's, yeah, raise your voice, say it yeah. loud. But at the bottom line, make sure you take your butt to the ballot box and vote. 
You yes. know what I mean? Because our ancestors fought hard for that right and got beat, whipped, dog yeah. chased, water yeah. hose for that right. And they know <laughs> that right is um that right is is valuable because they're trying to change the laws right, right now of voting. Because they and, know and I'll tell you, I'll do you yeah. one better. I'll do you one better. Me being in Europe, people uh -huh. in the United States have no clue how much their vote over there affects the rest of the world. Fact. Now, if I go to my election box, it doesn't affect no other country but my own. I mean, right. the United States doesn't even know what the hell's going on in, in the Netherlands. So yes. it's none of your concern. But it is all of my concern what you vote for in the United States because that affects me as well. I got and you. so look at Trump. You elect the president and he's messing up the whole world. And what people in the United States need to understand is that it's more than a responsibility. It's a responsibility for the world because the world looks to, well, used to look to the leader of the U.S., mm. which we obviously don't do anymore, but we still have to <laughs> deal with this crazy person. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, first off, I didn't vote for him. You know what I mean? I I, yeah. <laughs> it was you in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you, you would think that when you see people uh, from different parties in different positions, like a Trump or like a Bush or like a, you know, a Reagan, like you, you hope that once they're in a position of power over everybody, that they would have some type of uh, sentimental conformity to right. like, yo, I'm a Republican, but uh, I want to, you know, help out the Democrats, you know, the Democratic people that didn't vote for me, you know, as, let them know that I'm with them. We like, we yeah. want or I'm a Democrat, let me still help out the, you know, the Republican side that didn't vote for me and let them know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so we didn't, I was hoping for that because, you we know. We were all hoping for that, trust Because, me. you know, like Trump is mentioned in all the hip hop records, like, you know, right. like Trump, 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 Trump. But then, you know, you get this side and you go, whoa, wait, yeah. hold up. Where's the, you know, where's, where's the money guy? You know what I mean? Uh, but leave you the know, politics alone. It wasn't even a money guy, because if you really look at his business track record, he hasn't really accomplished a lot if it wasn't for his daddy's money or... Yeah, but yeah, look at it from this standpoint. It is a money thing, because if yeah, you okay. think he ain't accomplished, then it's been accomplished. Yeah, because, that's true. you know, the, 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 I guess the game to play with money is to not have debt afforded to you so you know in a sense yeah 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 and then you know taxes, what i mean so yeah. if you if you're if you're not having to pay taxes if you're not then you're doing right. an excellent job because then now yeah. all that money and, you know in, in the ways and there's so many ways to protect your bread that's you know that's the only thing if you making high six figures you know uh, the hundred thousand or two hundred thousand oh you want them re republican tax breaks because they looking out for your money they don't care if you're so black you white green so do you think that most Republicans are rich people? Because they're not really for the Republican agenda, only for their own money. No, I'm not, I ain't gonna say, there's a lot more Republicans that are rich, but now all of them are rich. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and what people fail to realize is that prior to, I don't know, whatever, the I, I have to reflect on, I think it was the uh, Kennedy, um, the Kennedy presidential race. Republicans was for black folks. Like really, right. it, it was it was John Kennedy getting Dr. King out of prison yeah. or out of jail that switched that whole little genetic makeup yeah. because yeah, Dr. True. King was friends with Nixon. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, you know, a, a lot of people get it twisted as if the Republican Party didn't wasn't really for African Americans. They actually was prior right. to that. You know what I mean? Um, and then the, once um, the switch happened. I, know I don't really different. want to get too political. I want to yeah. go back to I want to go back to the artist and and uh, the music and the creative industry. Um, having been in this industry for twenty years or more, even because that I I've known you for twenty years, but you were way ahead of me uh, with the music. Um, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned in the industry that really yeah. changed your way of working? Get your paperwork straight first time out. Yeah, yeah, that's what I always advise. Them. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm happy so, to hear that because that's the first thing I tell my artists. <laughs> get to pray. Yeah, because you know I didn't. I, when I first started, I didn't know there was superstar clauses. Right. Because like, everybody, oh, you getting a great deal, and I'm like, 
15 points. You're getting 15 points. That's a great deal. Right. Like, but then when you start doing the mathematics on it, you're only getting 15% of 75%. Right. So, so that's now, not really 15. Right, right. And so, and then out of that 15%, you got to pay everybody. Right. Your producers. Your whole your, team. Yeah. Anybody that's a part of that record. Yeah. So you ultimately end up walking away with maybe 5 to 7%. Right. You got to do the math. You got to be good right. at the math. Of yeah. 75%. Keep in mind that before you can get that 75, you still have to pay back all the money they spent on marketing, all the money that they spent on. This is just the break after you are clear. Are you so, independent? Yes. I'm very, yeah. I'm is, that, is that a conscious decision? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm independent until, you know. Um, until, until you get a deal that is good for you. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. that's how because you should do it. <laughs> you want them to when you you want it to be a true partnership yeah. not a slavery situation yeah, yeah, when, yeah you know when artists sign they go oh so and so got a million dollars yeah but then so and so also gave up 100 percent of their publishing they gave yeah, up masters their tour. yeah they masters whatever. they give up yeah. their touring rights so yep. for me it was just a matter they don't of see that part no nah, because they see, they see the that picture with the champagne the bottle i got right. signed and that's right. what i always tell my artists you why do you want to get signed because right. what Marketing, you can hire a marketing company for that. For what? The, the money? You don't want to be in debt because if your shit doesn't work, then you got to pay, pay them back. So why yeah. do you really want to get signed? That's the first question I ask when they say, I want to be signed to a label. Why? And then they really have to think about that. Like, yeah, why do I? Because it's, it's so, um, how do you say that? It's so in, imprinted in us from back in the day that we need a label to do everything, which was kind of the case back then, but it's not really the case now. There's so many ways to be independent and keep your money yeah. without needing a label. Yeah, but you see, the thing about it, the, the one time you go to a, a label is when you need mass distribution, like on a level that, um, where, where you want mass distribution and an influx of marketing money. So for me, even if I did a situation, it's gonna be like, yo, What's the marketing dollars attached to this? Because we all know that. That's always that, the first question. The marketing. Yeah, yeah that's where's all the you marketing need dollars? Now? Yeah, you can give me a uh, hundred million dollars or not. Well, yeah, you can give me a hundred million dollars, <laughs> but I said you can give me a million dollars. But if that money is just all in production and whatever, right. then there's then nothing not for marketing. The, I'm not right. going to win. Yeah, because so, you need yeah. to earn that money back. You need to give that yeah. hundred, earn that before they pay you anything. Right. So most people sign for fifty grand and they have to live off of that. But even that, but even that, that, that mass distribution. If you have money on your own, if you have an investor or whatever the hell, you mm -hmm. can create that without having to be signed to a label. Well, you know, at the, but also, you, but you got to play the political game, though. Yeah, because I know. <laughs> you know, it, you know, the Billboard is control is 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 not just its own independent entity. It's right. Got you got to know the right people. Right. So you know. It's, 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 uh, it's the I think the music the business is 90% politics and business, right. and then 10% you're uh, know, actually talent, you know. Right, you right. <laughs> well, we can hear that by the mumbles nowadays. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so, so you said paperwork. What else? Uh, well, I mean, that's it, it starts there. If I could go back, that would be the thing was one, understanding the label itself. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, and when I say understanding the label, meaning do they promote and market? What are their promotions and marketing? Yeah, yeah. Like? What What but, are the things that they, what are their services for you? Right. What are they good at? Yes. You know what what is mean? their strength? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and don't all, only look at who, who do they have signed? Because if they have big artists, then you about to get shelved if the big artist gets a, 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 an album out. Or Unless whatever. you land with an A and R that's got something to prove, but you know, at the end of the day, yeah. they all trying to keep their jobs. Right. That's why music is the music sound the same right now. Because oh, I also I tell everyone uh, if they get a contract from a label, make sure that it has a um, how do you say that a time in there, like a uh, a guarantee, a guarantee. Yes, yeah, so because yeah. if, if you have a if if it only says you need to put out two albums. The two albums, they can stretch that over 10, 20 years. So mm -hmm. put the time in there, half and put that in the contract. Like I need to, I want to put out two albums for this label within two years, like one album uh -huh. a year or whatever, or a half a year, whatever you want. Because well, if you a, put that yeah, in there, they can't guarantee. shelf you. Yeah, you get a release guarantee. And sometimes record yeah. companies will sign an artist 
just so that they can clear the way for their artists. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And, uh, which is like kind of sad, but that's what they do. So you try right. to, you know, if you're going, if they're going, they're going to do that, make sure you get the most money you can because you're not coming out. And then they'll what write are, you off at the end. Yeah. Yeah. What are, okay. So you were just saying that if you had known about the paperwork, you, uh, before all of this, then you would have <clears throat> done better or known better. Probably wouldn't um, have had a deal. Right. So what are, <laughs> what are some of the, the big failures that you've had that really made you grow as an artist and a person? Well, that was one. One of the things is not understanding the paperwork, what yeah. the, uh, not, not just the paperwork, but just the system of record that, yeah. companies and how they work, you know, and realizing that they're just a big uh, bank that loans you money and right. put a high interest yes, that's rate what on I it. say, yeah. That's, you know, that it put a high interest rate on it that you can't pay back. Right. But they'll, if you do good enough, hey, here's another money. Right. Hey, hey, well, here's another set they're of money. They're going to keep you and stringing they, along, yeah. And they keep you in debt. And you'll make no money until, you know, you end up popping off. And then yeah. once you pop off, you win. Think about right. TLC when they... When I they was sold, about to say, ask TLC. <laughs> right. <laughs> they sold 10 million records. Yeah, and didn't make any money. Went yeah, bankrupt. See, and that they, that was ten million records when when CDs and cassettes right cassettes. physical copies right and so you think ten million times nine dollars and over and here these, it was even more right <laughs> and, and 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 these women couldn't walk away with a meal ticket a piece only right. three hundred grand yeah a piece you know out of that ninety million dollars that was made so and this you know, is uh, this is why I tell my artists learn the business. I give master classes um, in mm -hmm. music marketing and management. So, and, and it's, it's still baffling to me how many of those, those students are sitting there like, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know. And I'm like, but you've been in this game for a minute. Um, but I guess I wouldn't have classes to give if people knew everything. But, um, but I'm still very interested in what name one big failure, like a personal mistake well, not necessarily failure, but a point where you were like, oh, I did this and it, it didn't work out and I learned from it. Well, I mean, it's crazy because a lot of things I put my hands on tend to become successful. Right? <laughs> I was and about so, to say, like your whole 20 years, <laughs> so it's like, like uh, you just did great things. Well, did I did. That's failures? because I, I, it, no, I, I didn't have the successes that I wanted. I, that, we can put it that way. Where, yeah, but it's um, still success. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying as far as failure, I didn't, I didn't, I don't see failure. I see uh, growth in the sense of. That's what I okay, mean. Yeah. So in the sense that, okay, um, I guess with uh, like when my, with, with one of my records, it was just like, yo, had I understood who the, uh, at that time, Tower Records, Warehouse, yeah. Sam Goody's, like all of them yeah. over in the States was, you know, record stores that you can go to. Uh, had I understood the buyers better, yeah, yeah, then I would have been able to get my record in. Yeah, you see what I'm saying in, yeah. into better situations. Or had I, you know, I think for me the growth was understanding. Like, okay, you didn't know the marketing side of this, so now go learn that. Okay, yeah. you didn't understand the distribution side of this, so go learn that. You know, and I think for me that was what it was. Every project I put out, or every project I was a part of when I, it didn't achieve, attain the success that I wanted it to achieve, um, I had to go learn why it didn't, you know? And once yeah. I learned why, so the fail, it was, for me, the failure was in not having the knowledge right out the gate that could have helped me. But you know what, that that's, because... nobody has that knowledge. Even if somebody tells you that, you, you're gonna have to experience it to really know what it is like. Um, right. So, I lost my train of thoughts. We're talking about the biggest failure. I know, but I was going to say that, um, oh yeah, I remember what I was going to say. From the moment I met you 20 something years ago, you <laughs> always in my, uh, and, and, and I, I stress this, the, the time so people understand um, what I'm talking about. Cause this is not, I met him a year ago or so. No, I, right. I met him when it was the nineties. So. <laughs> I'm yeah, right, right. old millennium. Right, um, right, yeah, yeah. So, so from the moment I met you, you were not just an artist to me. You've always positioned yourself, in my opinion, as a businessman. 
And that is something that differs you from regular artists. And that's not a, 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 a dismissive to the, the regular artists, but the right. fact that you're talking about this type of knowledge, this whole conversation, because I'm looking at the time like, what? Um, <laughs> it's just, it, it, it shows again that you have always been a businessman next to your artist being, which is why you've never really had big failures because as soon as you encounter something, you want to learn about it, you perfect your craft, you perfect your skills and you apply it. Yeah, and, and, but you find, and you find um, your space within that. See, so yeah. it's like you learn what it is and then you try to figure out where can you fit in right. in that and still have your own identity. Exactly, See, and, and that is something that you've, always done even in the in the in the lost years that i didn't know you i knew you were doing that because you've always mm -hmm. been that person like when we when we met each other like the next day you were doing this and then the next day you were doing that and you were hitting me up like you did you did the jams and you did yeah, that, yeah, and yeah. that and that and that and i'm like oh my gosh this dude i feel like i need to i need to do better and, and that's, <laughs> you're you're the type of person that i feel everyone should have in their circle to motivate you and to right. to be inspired by which is one of the biggest reasons i wanted to have you on this talk as well because oh yeah man well yeah I and mean, not to mention i watched your growth <laughs> oh thank you yeah, it's you minimal really, compared you to even, yours but <laughs> you, you, nah, nah you've done some real things like i've seen the people you've interviewed and and, and the people Thanks. you've been around in the circles you've done and you know and and to watch uh watch that development was was pretty dope you yeah, know what I mean? like, and, hey, look at that. What she doing this? What she got this person, that person? I was like, yeah, man, that's what's up. So uh, that's you know, true. Kudos to I you. I watched you. I'm I'm thankful that you say that because I don't give myself enough credit. That's still something I'm learning to do because I still think I'm just the little old girl from Amsterdam, um, just doing what I like. But but yeah, I if you look at it like that, and especially since you've known me this long, I was such a little <laughs> girl when you met me. Right. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do any of that when I met you. I didn't do no, any of it. No, that's what I'm so, saying. You, yeah. yeah, that was none of that. You, you met me before I was even in the music industry. <laughs> Real facts. Yeah, that's hilarious. I think I did. Ra did I do radio? May I may have done radio already. No, you was getting ready to start. You right, because I do yeah. remember I was playing your songs on my radio station. Yeah, yeah. but I that was. That. But we knew you. I think you knew me before you knew I was a musician. You know what I'm saying? Think, like. I yeah, because we, I think there was a, we, we, it was like some internet club where everybody we, Yeah, like, we met online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I went out to, uh, to LA, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's right. where we met up um, yeah. with my girl Freshta. Yeah, she, Fre yeah, how's she yeah. doing? Yeah. Oh, oh, she's yeah. great. She just got married last year. Oh, and, that's um, dope, man. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I couldn't be in the wedding because uh, my dad had passed away in that same oh. time. So, but yeah, right. we're still friends. And oh, uh, she dope. still knows who you are. <laughs> we had a good time. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's I was actually awesome. supposed to be back in LA this month, next week, but Corona. So yeah, yeah. I'll be well, back. I'll I'm be supposed back. To be preparing for a festival. Yeah, I know, but, right? Yeah, so. But um, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, like I said, man, it's we've come a long way, and you've come a long way, and I've watched your growth, and I'm very excited about what what you've done, and and Thank and you. how you you know you 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 you, and I was just like, yo, she put herself in position to win you know what oh, I mean yeah. and I've always admired that you know so big kudos to you you know thank you uh, oh and I, I actually I'm, I'm I'm working on something really really big and I'm gonna have to involve you in that because you know if I win I want everybody to win but I'll oh, I'll, I'll, I'll check you on the side about <laughs> that um, yeah. because I think that will be a really really good opportunity for you as well um yeah, we're we're getting to the end of this talk. Um, are there any other inspiring words that you have yeah. for the people <laughs> yeah, well, after hey. this whole hour of inspiration? <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, at the end of the day, man, uh, for any great achievement, someone has to be the first to do it. Why not you? If you believe in you, then you can. You're possible. You know, most people, ninety percent of the times, you're gonna hear no or nah, we're not with that. But there's still that one, that one. Even if you heard it, ninety nine percent. Yeah. Is that one percent that will agree, and uh, you'll win? Just think about uh, American Idol over here. Every single network said no, including Fox. Yeah. It was the daughter of Fox that said no. You really should take a look at this. Looked at that, it became the highest-grossing show in the history of the ch network. So yeah. you know, it's just a matter of 
um, you don't need all ears, you need the right ears. Right. You know what I mean? Thank you. And so, yeah. And I look at so it from keep, that keep standpoint. Doing. Especially if it's something you love, if you're in it for the wrong reasons, then yes, yeah, step aside if, you, if right. you don't want it. But if you're in it for the right reasons, if that is your passion, do not let go. Because right. if that's your path, and, and you know, um, going back into our faith, um, what I've learned is not to force things. If, if I have to force something to make it happen, then it wasn't my path. It wasn't meant for me or not right. the right time. Then I'll get there at some point. But yeah, if you, know, you stay true to you, you'll be all right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And keep great people around you that motivate you. And <laughs> well, you definitely got to level up. You know, definitely. don't hang around with negative Nellies because they're not good for your for your business and for right, your right, right, right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You definitely got to level up your uh, mindset when it comes to uh, understanding um, and know and know that everybody's not going to go with you. Right. All your friends ain't going to be there. None of them's going to go with you. So right. at the end of the day, you have to figure out the way to be the best you that you can be. And that's by surrounding yourself with people like yourself or, uh, yeah. like I said, people that reference things and go and go listen to some people that are inspiration uh, or step yeah. outside the comfort zone, you know, oh, and, yeah. and, and really go check out people. There's a, I'll give you this real quick. There's a series on Netflix called Abstract, right? Mm -hmm. Abstract, it covers every... Uh, it covers different people's genres of the things they do, like the glass blower, her yeah. story, or the dude that created the Chrysler 300, his okay. story, or fonts. Like, it, uh, there's a person that creates fonts. Like, this is the who's who of font making, yeah. and they show you why fonts are relevant and why they're, you know. Oh, you know, yeah. You, yeah, you get yeah, to yeah. learn all of these things that you had no knowledge of and becomes inspiring, yes. you know, in that sense. So when I watched that, I was like, yo, like different people in different uh, fields. Uh, yeah. Work, yeah, fields, thank you. Different people in different fields doing, like they're the best at that. And you yeah. get to learn how they think, why they think, when they think, and what motivated them and what setbacks they had that allows you to go, yo, it becomes applicable to your life. Yes, yeah. and, that's, and that's something that all the people that have a passion have in common. All yeah. the people that have worked hard to get to where they are, no matter what it is, have that in common. And that's why I like to speak to people who are in all kinds of different fields. Yeah. Because I've been speaking, yeah, sure, initially to creative people, but I've been talking to, you know, I, well, he's also a creative person, but I just spoke to, um, uh, on Monday, I spoke to Helene Flowers and he was incarcerated for 22 years, innocent. Wow. And, and and how positive he looks at the world. Oh, that was just inspiring on its own. Like, <laughs> right. geez, that was that was just amazing. But he definitely also had a story and he's now super successful. He's done more in a year than he's out than I have done in my whole life, I feel. But yeah. um, when you got that hustle and determination and you know, right. it, it works. Yeah. So, so yeah. In closing, because I know you you have a, I know so, I'm I got a new time. album coming out uh in October called Iron Dove. Check that out. Um, also, the, uh, I, I'm on the radio, uh, gh3radio.com. Go check it out. I come on Sunday, uh, Saturdays, I'm sorry, afternoon, and you can check out what I've done there. Also, um, the cartoon, The Jammies, D-A-J-A-M-M-I-E-S. Go check that out. We're on Roku, Apple TV, Hulu, um, Amazon Prime, and a bunch of Go others. Go to MC Nice. LA.com is that the website? Oh, no, mcnice.com, e -M -C -E 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 -N -I -C -E yeah. dot com. Yeah. And find and, his uh, information on his Instagram or you know, if you need inspiration, hit him <laughs> up. I'm getting the countdown, which is why I'm like wrapping it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, but thank you so much. I, I, it was such a great time catching up with you, and we have yeah. to we have to do this more often. I wrote down the Most book. Deaf. I'm gonna read it and. Um, I'll get back to you about this this opportunity that I have as well. So Okay. Thanks so much everyone for tuning All right, in. All right, take it easy. Yes, and be safe. Thank All right. you. Bye. All right, bye.